for some time. I don't know any other organization quite like yours. I think it's an amazing and impressive achievement. And it's not paralleled in other places, but it's surely needed. And so when we come across the valley to visit her, the sense of space is unlike the expensive sense of space in Los Angeles. <laughs> so this was really a reaction to space as we drove through it and as I looked around me and really soaked in this environment that's very different from what I see every day. Um, the movement of the trees and the way they move shadows across the ground, or in the water, you know, we have a little pond, little water feature in our backyard, or the wind moves it and it's really quite beautiful. Things could be upside down or right side up, and in the end I decide on them one way or the other. Um, I think it's playful. And also, I work on these uh, all unstretched. I usually start them on the floor. And of course, when something's on the floor, and you move around it like, what's up and down when I'm looking at the floor? And then the wind was just howling. I was trying to get a sense of the wind moving through there. And we looked up and there were the rocks. They weren't quite that dramatically balanced. Okay, it's a little artistic license. So this was an experiment. There is nothing on this painting that's lighter than a middle gray. And I thought, can you actually make a painting where instead of using the whole value scale, you're like just in that part? You know, I worked up a land that was built like this way. But then here, in these things, I created a landscape that went this way, so it actually creates this thing. You know, that just seemed like the clouds and sky, movement, rain, rabbit holes. <laughs> Next. <laughs> I like the energy that happens when I like do something on a piece of paper, cut another design into it, do another painting over here, do this other painting, and then you layer them together with this kind of open architecture where you see some coming through on the other, and then suddenly what happens at the intersections are these other kind of nice events, uh, especially when you go right down to where the water comes back and forth and you see these wonderful ripples left in the sand. Oh, there's these little boats in here tossed on huge waves. I, I kind of have a little bit of a horror of it. Too. Also in the show are some works that I did and I continue to do in a wild biology series. 
These are more specific in terms of the kinds of imageries that I use. They're based on the concept that our apparently solid world is mostly void, so you can read, this is good. Most of them are all these white shapes all the way around here is a scan of the human brain. Actual growth and learning happens when emotion is tied to this, that we ought to be having students jumping and laughing and doing things while they're learning rather than sitting down. Please take your pens and take some hats. <laughs> that it's actually contrary to the ability to learn if emotion isn't attached to it. Anyway, an aside. So water is, uh, is fluid, creativity is fluid, the brain is mostly water. Uh, up at the top are fish, down at the bottom are birds. They move fluidly through the atmosphere and through water. This one actually started off with a lot of uh, imagery from um, spores and um, other pollen things. My friend Ann Page, who's out there, you know, does a lot of beautiful work with that. You should see it when I like it. When the ocean's only one inch deep, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> and, um, you see these ripples in the sand, but it also, the kind of richness of the ripples reminded me a lot of henna designs, which are based on natural forms and growth and idea of energy. And so if you look across the top when you see the painting, there are embedded in there a number of designs from India that are based on henna patterns. So I painted this in the, in the month and a half after my mom died. and. Um, there's a, there's a beautiful Ganesh elephant up there at the top. You guys can see all that. It's a pink elephant. It's barely there. There's also a, a net that goes across the sky. Because when my mom died, I really felt very strongly that, um, you know, like the roof had gotten blown off my house somehow. So I created a net and a good luck um, um, being and a, a ray of flowers that would go across the top, plus rainbows. I mean, this is like, it, it was pretty schmaltzy, I guess, in the end, but uh, it was very nice for me to do that painting. You know, it, it just seemed like a real moment to me because she was going away to college. And I really felt, she's a, uh, she's a quick kid, she's pretty sharp, and so it just seemed to me that this, this intelligence that she had was entering the world and the world was entering her intelligence. Like our ideas, everything just sort of grooves and is, is in a, kind of a stew that's not named, and then we get these things that come up and we name them. So it actually seems very much like my experience of landscape and islands and water and lily pads and seven stones and all of this stuff. It seems very related to me because in water, of course, we become these completely visually whooshy kind of um, unsolid forms. Here, and she's trying to cross this, the, the deep water in, in her grandmother's pool. And I just like the painting because of the quality of light, the quality of movement, the color. Does this sound familiar? It's like color, light, movement, and all these things that relate to our experiences of life. The piece we just installed in Santa Monica as part of the Borderline Neighborhood Rehabilitation. And so this is, um, there are three birth poles that are right in the neighborhood. And the neighbors, we worked with the neighbors a lot to talk about the birds in the neighborhood and what they wanted. This was the third of them, the seabird folded. Um, this is what it looked like. It was on a really miserable little lot, and we just, um, we transformed it, I think it's safe to say. Uh, the, the tallest panel was 10 feet tall, but each panel has a native wildflower, and then the, we, we used sandpaper and we scratched into plexiglass and created these roses. And then next, if you look at night, we embedded LED lights in the frame so that the roses lit up with the LEDs in the frame. So it looked really different at night. It was kind of cool. It was a nice piece called the Birds Take Flight. It's a single pole with three birds coming off of it. And the three birds, I think, create kind of a lily type shape. And then we also, if you look at the next one, we used a lot of iridescent paint on this. So as you walk around, it looks <laughs> quite different from one angle to the next. So, um, I did uh, two platforms in a, one single station for the orange line extension. And on the bottom, I designed maps of the exact places where people were standing. This is, I think this is the last one. Shows natural wildflower vegetation. And then the map on the bottom, which you can barely see, showed a topographic map before anything was built up. So it showed the hills. That's it. Thank you.
to all of you for being here. Thank you again to the museum and the curators and especially the Council of 100. What this has just been wonderful. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.